In this video I will show you how to win by playing aggressively at the right time. This game is being played with public lobby randoms, so unfortunately I won't be able to make my moves as freely as in subscriber games because there are a lot of suiciding players, but I will still try to play more aggressively rather than passively if possible. This game is being played with fixed cards, alliances on, balance blitz rolls and as you can obviously see blizzards. One of them being in Africa, which is really going to help for me as an African player because I will have to guard one board or less. The other two blizzards in North America and Asia are not that much impactful, or unless if the Asian player captures Asia, so he will have one board or less as well, but I mean usually the Asian player goes with Ukraine to minimize the number of borders anyways, so at the end it's more or less the same. Anyways, let's check my opponent's stats right quick. The developers have recently removed the rank visibility in the games, so you don't know exactly what rank players you're playing with anymore, but you can still guess that from their stats. So based on the stats alone, I would guess that they could be ranked anywhere from intermediate to master. It's very rare to get grandmaster rank players to your games, so I don't think any of them are, these player statistics are definitely not bad, but on the other hand none of them are amazing but probably not too bad to be at a beginner level either. So I would guess my opponents are intermediates, experts or masters. But we will see the way how they play, as the rank might not necessarily reflect the real player's skill properly, and the player ranks tend to fluctuate anyways, so we will actually see guys how the players play. I think that matters much more, but to know their stats is a useful information too. Anyways, let's just finish capturing Africa. I've already made the alliances with the orange and blue players, so I don't think they're going to invade me. I didn't make the alliance with the yellow player, but I think it's not really needed anyways. He hasn't captured Australia yet, so obviously it will be his biggest goal as of now, and then if he wants to attack someone, then I think he would rather go for a bigger continent player, so the blue player at this case, or if not, then he will probably be using the Australian turtle strategy. It seems the orange player will try to expand to and capture North America. I don't really like it to be honest, but on the other hand there's the blue player with Europe, so the game should be balanced even if the orange player captures North America. But I wouldn't really like it at all, because I am yellow will be the weakest players, so one of us could be very likely eliminated first. And the thing with the public lobbies is, that if you start attacking someone first, then most likely you will get eliminated first too, I'm talking when it comes to attacking stronger players, as most likely nobody will end up helping you, while that stronger player will just end up crushing you, since obviously he's quite stronger than you, and it makes the most sense for him to destroy that aggressive player rather than someone from the neutral turtling players. So as sad as it is, it's better to play passively in the public lobbies. And it's better to wait till another player starts attacking someone else and then you could help him out, rather than to start attacking someone by yourself firstly and hoping that someone helps you out. As when you're attacking someone, other players most likely will be just safely continuing to turtle, or will try to take the advantage over you by themselves, by expanding and capturing lots of stuff for themselves. So while you do the dirty work for them, they could take the benefit of that. So you end up in a very rough situation then. And OMG, the orange player has just actually invaded blue. That's good, but only if he doesn't capture North America. As that would be even worse than blue having Europe. From a wolf onto a bear like we say in my country, or like the English speakers say out of the frying pan into the fire. And it's being said when you move from a bad or difficult situation to one that is even worse. Well, maybe that's not a perfect case to use that saying because the orange player invaded blue by himself, but not me or yellow. But you should still get my main point, the blue player with Europe wasn't that much of an issue, like the orange player with both of the Americas currently is. Too bad the yellow player's turn was skipped so we couldn't see if he had attacked orange. I decided not to invade the orange player that turn either, and see if it could be dealt with the blue player alone. I specially moved out my troops from the orange player's border, so the blue player could go through it and invade orange. 
but unfortunately the orange player was smart enough to strengthen his South American border because he saw the upcoming attack of the blue player. So I guess everything depends on me now since the yellow player didn't invade orange either. Well sure thing, let's do it guys. Let's play aggressively. Obviously it would be just dumb to let the orange player get more troops than all of us combine. So it's better to invade the orange player sooner than later. He held both of the Americas for a turn and that's more than enough. He got compensated the troops he lost from invading blue, and he shouldn't want anything more, as I didn't even invade him into South America. I think he understands that himself too that it would be just ridiculous for us to let him hold both of the Americas. So anyways to recap I didn't invade orange first turn, because I wanted to see if the blue player be able to retaliate by himself or if the yellow player invades orange. But since nobody of them did, I had to invade orange by myself. It's better to do sooner than later, as if you wait too long, then that player might even afford taking you out, and without others helping you out, obviously you will get eliminated first. But if you do nothing when your opponents do nothing as well letting the strongest player dominate the game, then obviously that strongest player is going to win the game. Anyways, I'm really glad that the orange player doesn't invade me even though he could. But then, I would either invade him into South America, or after recapturing Africa leave my biggest army on his border. So at the end it wouldn't be good for any of us. So it would probably be the best for the orange player to focus on attacking blue, and it would be even better that the yellow player would help him doing so. As an African player obviously I'm not as safe to attack blue like yellow who only has one border to guard, so the blue player couldn't invade him anyhow without suiciding. And obviously at the same time I have to prevent the orange player from capturing North America. So it wouldn't be wise to attack the blue player for me at all as he wouldn't help me to attack the orange player anymore, but instead he would probably started targeting me, and with the orange player getting strong, orange would just eliminate me from the game. The blue player is obviously my best ally, so I need to keep him that way at any cost while the orange player is being so desperate of getting both of the Americas. I mean that's just insane, I mean we were allies but obviously I wasn't going to let him take the advantage over our alliance. The alliance should be mutually beneficial, otherwise it should be broken if one of the allies starts taking the advantage over it. So I just couldn't let the orange player manipulate me. But he still seems to be so desperate even after I invaded him leaving my troops there. So I told the blue player to attack the orange player and he did, so I think now it should be clear for orange that there's no way he holds both of the Americas. And he just crushes my biggest army. And I mean that's fine because that doesn't break the balance of the game. But if I were him, then I would have rather eliminated the blue player instead, at the same time getting compensated a bit by the 5 blues cards, and getting rid of the 4th player who is not really needed in the game. I think that would have been much more better rather than making both of us as the weakest players. Especially when the yellow player seems to be his buddy anyways so that would have been beneficial for him to get rid of one of the enemies completely. I decided to split my troops on the borders equally, so nobody would consider invading me, but at the same time the orange player wouldn't be so scared that I want to retaliate by attacking him too. But I mean maybe I shouldn't have left any of the troops on the territory of North Africa, as then the blue player might have considered taking orange out. But if he wants to attack Orange, then obviously he could still access him the other way around too. And OMG, OMG guys. I cannot believe that the blue player went full suicide mode on the yellow player. I mean I understand that the yellow player was a little bit annoying by invading him while not that much caring about the orange player back then when he had both of the Americas. But that just makes them both lose the game. The blue player's army was even smaller than the yellow player's one, so he got insanely lucky to have even 11 troops left after that attack. As otherwise he would have been the first player to get taken out. But don't get me wrong, it really puts me in the advantageous situation. But I'm just not sure if I can take both of them out, or only yellow. So this is why my moves were so clumsy. I mean I understood that I could have taken both of them out, 
but I was thinking whether taking the blue player out had decreased my advantage in the endgame with the orange player, as multiple territories of ones are not the same like one big army. One big army is obviously better, as you almost never lose any troops capturing these ones, so your troop count stays the same. So not knowing what would be the best to do with blue, I decided to leave him alive. So instead of taking him out, I captured as many territories of orange as possible to increase the territorial bonus of mine, and decrease the territorial bonus of him. Also invaded him into South America as I knew that he was going to invade me into Africa either way, so to decrease his bonuses even more, and obviously because it's the end game anyways, which I could very likely win if the circumstances turns out well. I have a wild card so I realized that I could potentially take out the blue player even if I don't fortify some troops next to him. And another reason not to fortify some troops next to him is because I still could stay as good allies with him in case he had traded and set at 3 cards. Anyways, it was huge mistake for the orange player not to capture as many territories of mine as possible, that led me of getting 7 troops instead of 3. And furthermore to unleash my army was another big mistake, because after taking the blue player out, I will be able to get the advantage as an attacker by being able to blitz orange's army first. And that is so nice guys, I even saved 7 troops because of that attack. So if we look at everything on the board it's obvious that I'm dominating this game, there's no way the orange player is winning. Not only I have more than twice troops, but way more territories as well and even 5 cards. So it's the game over. But now it's the time for the rank reveal. The yellow player was expert, and the blue and orange players were intermediates. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend checking some of these out as well. Watching more videos will help you to progress so much faster. Highly increase your skills by simply watching risk videos.